Latter-day Saints, let's talk about Utah. From the beginnings, Christianity in America has been a segregated business. Dr. Reverend Martin Luther King said that Sunday at 10 a.m. was the most segregated hour in American society. I mean, there are churches in the United States that are avowedly anti-slavery by the 1830s, 40s, 50s. Mormonism is not one of them. So I was writing some pages in the book in which I pulled together sort of a catalog of policy decisions and political stances LDS church leaders had taken against black equality. And as I wrote the names of all these LDS church presidents and leaders, I realized these were the names of all of the buildings I spent years learning and worshiping and having fun in at Brigham Young University. It bears noticing that the people who became leaders of the church were people who actively valued discrimination against black people long past the time when other faiths in the United States did. It is worth asking ourselves, what are statues for? Why do we name buildings? Why do we name buildings after the people we name buildings after? What kind of environment does that create? What does it mean that every day, for example, as a student at Brigham Young University, I walked through and learned and had spiritual experiences in buildings that were named after people with abhorrent racial politics. Many of us move every day through built environments that are completely embedded with racialized histories, with histories of inequality. We don't even see it. None of these things are here by accident. Like Mormonism isn't predominantly white by accident. I thought we were white just because. We were white on purpose. We were white because Graham Young intentionally established territorial theocracy where in his vision, white men would rule over black. And he established slavery as much to keep black people out of the territory as he did to keep them as a, as a captive labor force. Mormonism was white on purpose. 
I wonder the extent to which we can be profoundly racist and be profoundly inspired at the same time. I wonder, I don't know. But what I do know is that when we name buildings and when we invest in and maintain statues and center our cities around them, we idolize them. Like literally, we cast them as idols. They become emblems of power and we choose emblems of power and center around emblems of power that are not brown, not black, not female. They're about imperial forms of power. They're about theocracies that are premised on white supremacy. And that means something. We have choices as to how we furnish our lived environments. And those choices have real price tags and they have real moral and cultural price tags as well. What does it cost indigenous people living in Salt Lake City that this statue of Brigham Young is on a giant pedestal at the base of which indigenous people are reclined. What does that say? And the fact that white people don't see that, how does that create the foundations for a democracy, not to mention a community of faith?